All right, so are we liking Android so far? Kind of somewhat rewarding where you see something on the screen and it feels, oh, this is better or something? Um, okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, so kind of what I mentioned last class is, uh, shut up! So what I mentioned last class is we're going to be um, uh, kind of learning about like three or four or five widgets, things that we can kind of do. And then that's going to be the extent of what we build our interfaces out of. All right. So we're only going to probably spend another, probably this week learning widgets. And then from here, we're going to start going back to programming stuff. Uh, and then we're going to also start integrating some database stuff. So kind of storing things uh, persistently over runs of our application, that kind of stuff. So um, important things. But again, I want to reiterate, we're not going to uh, learn how to design amazing interfaces. We're going to do things in, you know, in terms of our relatively small toolbox. We can read stuff in from a text box. We can write stuff out to a, a, a label, and then sometimes we want lists of things, <laughs> all right? And that's going to be kind of where we, where we bottom out, all right? Um, so uh, what we're going to do today, if we just run this real quick, I think my current state of this is, um, oh, don't I have a, a button that pops up? Oh, yeah, it's, it's re reloading. So I have a button that pops up, so for your homework you were supposed to have, something that starts up, it has a label, it has something on it, it has a button, and then you're proving that you know how to respond to a button click and you know how to um, get programmatic access to that label by updating the label with something, right? Okay, so when I click on this button, it's calling this on click me button pressed, in which case it's grabbing access to its label and then setting the text to woot something, woot count. So, um, so there's count as zero, count as one, two, three, okay, so on and so forth. Okay, makes sense to everybody. What's the kind of our the little widgets we've learned how to do there? Here's a label. We can make it look like something. Now I want to change the label in my code. I have to give myself access to the label. That's through MVC, right? Model View Controller, and this is Android's implementation of MVC. So if I want to gain access to one of the widgets that's on my screen. I ask the activity itself to find a view within himself given its ID. Make sense? So an activity is kind of a screen in our application. So what's actually happening is here, here is we're saying, screen, go and find that label that I want to change. And I happen to name that label. It's ID, I named it my label. So I, that's like a variable name. I named it something that would be helpful. Yeah. Probably, yeah. I tend to do that, yeah. So whatever I'm naming my label or my widget out here, I tend to use the variable name as being the same. Um, it's certainly not bad practice. Yeah, I mean, the idea would be, and this is similar to like constructors where we would take in a variable name for the constructor that matches our field, right? You name the field first name for a reason because it's the first name. You should probably have your constructor take in a string first name as well because that's what you're expecting, right? You don't want to just artificially say, well, I'm going to have this one be called F name and this one called first name just to make them different. And what really happens with uh, inexperienced programmers and unfortunately even with experienced programmers is they end up doing that because they don't understand the use of the this keyword. So this dot first name equals first name, all variables boil down to their most local definition. So in that particular case, first name would, return, would refer to the parameter being passed to the constructor. This dot first name would refer to the field. Right, so being able to weaponize the this keyword is very, very important. And we're actually gonna see some examples of that as we get into these widgets a little bit. And I'm telling you that if you went out into industry today and you worked with, I would say, I'm gonna be nice and say six out of 10 developers, I think it's worse than that, would not, um, they wouldn't say this dot find view by ID. They would just say, find view by ID here like that. And, oh, magically it works, but they don't know why. They wouldn't be able to tell you why this dot find view by ID is actually what's happening there. 
Okay. Who's finding the view by ID? The current guy is. Who is the current guy? He's an instance of main activity. Why is that assumed to be in here? If I didn't put it in there, why is this dot presumed to be in front? Because this is not a static method, which means it's a instance method. So we are in an instance context. Stuff that happens inside this room, inside this method, is happening from this is perspective. But I'd always write it as this dot. A, because it keeps you from having spelling errors. And also, it is faster. Because we're telling it exactly where, going, where to find it. Go ahead. Correct. I'm going to say it's not necessary, but I always put it, and I promise you I understand how it works. Yeah. So what I would say is you should always put it as well, and if you don't put it, have it because you're, be because you're a rebel and you understand what it's doing, you just choose not to put it there. Okay? That's okay. I can respect that. Every coder has their style, right? And, and that, that's fine. But you can't, you're not allowed to have your own style if it's because you don't understand how something works. Right. You know, it can't be, well, I write it like that and it's always worked before. That doesn't fly. But I'm telling you that six out of 10 developers in industry, people making 100 grand a year, would say that. So, that's why I teach you the way I teach you. So you're not one of the... You're not a statistic. Because you should understand this stuff under the hood, even if your boss's boss's boss probably doesn't know either. Because they were the software engineer from 15 years before that. Okay, you'll know. You'll know that you know <laughs> what these things actually mean. Um, plus, with modern day IDEs, this prevents you from having a lot of spelling errors. This dot lets you fill in the blank. All right, so how do I find a label, well, I name my label something like a variable name. You name it something appropriate for what it is. In this case, my label is kind of this meaningless label, so it's just my label. <laughs> Couldn't come up with a better variable name than that. Um, so, uh, but it's certainly better than like label zero, label one, label two, label three that you might run into otherwise. So, um, one thing that you see with a lot of .NET developers when you use Visual Studio and you drag buttons in or drag labels in, it automatically names them for you. Where if you noticed, when we put a label in here, um, let me just go in and I'll just put another, they're called text views in, in this language. So I put a text view in. Oh, it actually did label it text view. Um, I thought maybe it wouldn't actually label it. And this one's text view two, text view three, so on and so forth. All right, so it's actually gave these guys variable names, but if you remember, the original one didn't actually have an ID. So whoever designed the default did it smartly, intelligently, most smartest, most smartest. Okay, they did it most smartest. That's right, isn't it? So, <laughs> ain't it? I was, I was sitting next to the chair of English yesterday in our chairs meeting, <laughs> and uh, we, we made some... Um, we were joking around. I don't remember what the, the comment was, but uh, um, there was like a, some grammar issue up there and the, the person who was speaking apologized for it. They said, oh, I said, that looked right to me, ain't it? <laughs> no, isn't that, isn't that right? It looks okay to me, ain't it? <laughs> something, like, something like that. <laughs> we started laughing. <laughs> now he's a pretty funny guy. All right, but we could all look at this and say that it certainly would not be appropriate to call these guys text view, text view two, text view three, right? Even though that's the default name. Now, if you don't intend to use it through MVC, if you don't intend to give yourself programmatic access to it, and this guy is just, you know, for decoration, you're labeling a text box or something like that, or an edit text in Android, um, then you don't you you don't have to remove the ID just to remove it. But anything that you intend to access in code, name it something appropriate. Go ahead. So on the left, you have the component tree there, and then those yellow triangles. The one you should like reference a string in the resources. Yeah, I don't do that. Why do you do that? So yeah, so there's this. Uh, here, I'll just explain it real quick. So in our resources, we have a thing called strings.xml. Mm -hmm. 
and this guy is meant for handling, well, so for instance, let's say that every single screen in your app, you wanted to have a thing at the top uh, that had the name of the app. So you store the name of the app here, and then every single screen, you'd have a label that's set to the name of the app um, from this guy. And what that lets you do is if one day you decide to change the name of your app, or maybe your app is called My App Version 1, and then you release a huge update, and now it's My App Version 2, you just change it in this one place, and now it's changed in the rest of your application. Yeah, so it's also used um, for supporting multiple languages because you can actually just put strings in here and there's like a tag for uh, flagging it for different languages where whatever um, language the thing was downloaded for, whatever the home languages of the device, it'll pick the right one with the right flag um, from the thing. I haven't done it before, but it's a, it's a thing. I also don't heavily um, use this, but that is where it would be beneficial is if you did have something that appeared on every single screen. Um, you change it in one place and now it's there. Uh, well, hard coding in it is always going to be fine, but if the top of your, you know, let's say you have 30 screens in your app and every single one of them has your uh, app name on it, um, well, you would have to change 30 screens if you hard coded it in. Or you, if you reference this guy on every one of those labels, then you just change it here and boom, they've all changed. So as your app gets bigger, you probably want to pay more attention to static things that are used more than once. Probably, you know, that's why this exists. So this, I, I don't want to advertise this as being stupid. It's just because we're building relatively small apps, you know, but they, you know, the reason they give you the warnings, and this is a warning, the little, uh, where's my uh, guy here? The little, you know, yellow thing. Yeah, those, those are warnings. So they're kind of saying, hey, hard coding stuff, maybe not the best idea. For us, it's fine. Yep. All right. Okay. But we can all get on board with the idea that we probably don't want to name our uh, uh, text views just text view, text view two, text view three. Want to be them to be meaningful. Same thing with uh, buttons. Now in Android Studio, we're maybe kind of encouraged to have uh, better practice. Where you know I went in here and I wrote a function, public void on click me button pressed. Right, so I just chose what that thing was called. So what I could do is I probably, if I really wanted to connect these, I would maybe call my um, button click me. Even though I'm not gonna access it in MVC, it might make some sense for me to click on my button. Instead of being button five here, I would maybe call it click me. Even though I don't access it in code, now that guy's called click me and this is on click me button pressed something like that so those two kind of match um, one thing to be careful of though is you can actually have this action work for multiple buttons so if i had five buttons and each one called this same function the view that gets passed in here would be which button called him so i could actually make decisions based on which button called him if i wanted to make a calculator and i had you know, one through or zero through nine buttons. I can have all the buttons call the same um, function and then grab the text off of whatever button called this guy as the value I'm adding onto my number. All right, we, and we might build something like that. So, you know, you don't necessarily always want to attach an event like this to an individual button because you might have more than one button that's calling it. All right. Um, but what I was getting at here is Android Studio or Android's version of uh, MVC is relatively protective against something that Visual Studio is not. And this is where people who write stuff in Visual Studio get into trouble. Where when you drag a button onto the screen in Visual Studio, it might name it button three, button four, button five. Uh, anybody in here ever use Visual Studio? Okay, if you wanna give, uh, you wanna have a button that has a, a on-click listener type thing like this, what do you do? How do you generate that uh, function? Double click the button. Oh. Double click the button and what does it do? It automatically comes in here and generates the on button 14 pressed, which is meaningless, right? It's meaningless code. 
especially if you have a fairly complex interface and all of a sudden you're looking at it and you have you know on button 14 pressed on button 7 pressed <laughs> you don't know which uh, what they're doing but if you change the name of the button does that automatically it will them? uh n i do not believe if you've already double clicked it creating the code and you change the name of the button i don't think it'll change it in code you probably can do a refactor okay. on the button and refactor is a software engineering tool so typically that should change occurrences in it okay. but best practices would be Change the name of your button to what you want it to be, then double click it. <laughs> so it has the appropriate name. Make sense? But that's something that uh, Visual Studio developers run into issues with. And it's uh, if you're ever working with a developer who's a, a .NET person, you can take a real quick measurement on their level of competence by just looking at their code that they have a whole lot of, you know, button two pressed events probably not a real experienced developer unless it's a stupid little app that has one button in it and they just i'm not going to rename my button i'll just double click it and write the thing real quick and it's a little utility but if it's an app that does something and they have button zero through 400 just skewed through the app <laughs> you're going to need some sort of like uh um uh, what's the yeah, translation, you have to need like a translation document that button 704 is on screen eight, and it's the bottom left button. Imagine having to log in and then having to scroll through that. Exactly. That's exactly the point. That's exactly the point. That, that's why we want to name things something reasonable so that it's easier to debug. Yeah. All right. So we have this event. Our button here, when we click on this, it calls that event because we've set this guy's uh, on click. I selected the button where it says on click. Oh, hold on. Right here. We set his on click to that guy, and we have a drop down here that, you know, uh, it will automatically find it. So the MVC implementation in Android notices that I have something called public void. It doesn't care what I've named it here, but it must take a view as a parameter. It doesn't care what I name that view, but it has to be public void and take a view as a parameter, and a single view. And at that point, it'll say, ah, that's a possibility for an on-click event. It'll add it to that dropdown. Okay. Every now and then, it hasn't happened as often more recently with recent updates to Android Studio. You'll write something like this and it won't show up in that drop down list. Um, usually that's a great old uh, rebuild thing. Usually just close Android Studio, reopen it, and it'll fix itself because Gradle automatically run again. You probably don't actually have to do that. You could force Gradle to run again, but you know, there's some magic happening behind the scenes with their uh, uh, MVC implementation. And sometimes it zigs when it was supposed to zag and that kind of stuff. Similarly, sometimes if you name a label something or whatever and you say r.id and it's not showing up there, or another common thing is it can't find r. If r shows up in red, it'll say, hey, I've never heard of this guy. Um, it's not that common, but if that happens, go to move right off the bat is just close Android Studio and reopen it. You know, and let Gradle run again, hopefully regenerating R. Because R is actually a name of a class. It's called R.Java. We can hunt through here and find it. And what it does is whenever we create a new thing and give it an ID, it updates that .java file with a new variable. So sometimes it, there might have been a, a hiccup where it deleted the file, went to update it, and never wrote it back for whatever reason. You know, timing error or something like that, or a file I/O exception, um, in which case you need to force it to regenerate it. Sometimes just adding another ID to something else will fix the problem as well, even if you immediately delete it. But it forces R to be rewritten. But that's another kind of common thing. If you start seeing any of these guys in red, so R, if that's in red, that means the source of your IDs is not part of your project. But that's not your responsibility. That's Gradle's responsibility. So Gradle needs to rebuild it. Close Android Studio, reopen it, forces Gradle to do that. There's another way to do it, too. You probably can uh, go to Gradle scripts. You might even be able to right-click on this or something and 
Um, here's build Gradle for the whole project. Yeah, I don't know. We could spend a few minutes finding it, I'm sure. But we can rerun Gradle if we wanted to. Um, okay, so questions about any of the stuff we've done up to this point. All right, so next thing we want to be able to do is we want to be able instead of, and let me get rid of these, um, okay, I'll just show you this thing. So sometimes, you know, clicking on something up here and pressing delete, that's okay. But sometimes you might have, um, you know, like I have a, a vertical linear layout here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a horizontal linear layout in here and let's just say that i tried to get these two text views to drop into that horizontal one but i i missed something like that because sometimes as your interface gets more and more complex here um let me so sometimes as my interface gets more and more complex um i might mean to drop something into a certain place but it actually drops into another place you can fix that in text here if you want. That would be your like your final option. If you just couldn't get it to work the way you wanted it to work, you go into text and rearrange the stuff. Um, you know, you notice here that we have a, um, uh, here's my linear layout. Here's another linear layout inside of there. Let's say I want this last text view to actually be inside of that final linear layout. I would just throw it in there like that. If I go back to design now, you'll see he's actually inside the other one. If I go back in there again and I take this text view, cut it, and I put it after the other text view, and I go back to design, now you'll see these guys are horizontally laid out. Okay, Now, this guy, I only see one. I mentioned this last class. What's happened? Yeah, so this guy right here, notice that his width is match parent. So even though I have two labels right next to each other, that first label says, I am the width of my parent, which is, who's this guy's parent? It's the container he's in. So his container is this horizontal linear layout, right? What's the width of that guy? Match parent. So who's the parent of this horizontal linear layout? Go with the code here. Well, actually, you can see it over here in design. So here's my horizontal linear layout. This guy's parent is my vertical linear layout. If I click on that vertical linear layout, what's the width of that guy? Match parent. Who's that guy's parent? The activity, the screen. So if this guy is match parent, and ultimately his great, great, great grandparent is the screen his width is going to take up the entire width of the screen i don't care how many guys are supposed to be horizontally aligned with me they're there we see it right here right here's another guy right here he's just shoved off the screen so if i take this guy and i switch his layout width to be wrap content you'll see the other guy gets sucked onto the screen now this guy is still match width of parent so he's only partially on the screen see we don't have the extra blue dot way over there it's some kind of somewhere out over here but i can set him to wrap content as well for width and now we have those guys horizontally laid out now let's say that I want the second text view to actually be vertically laid out before this linear layout and you didn't want to go into text because like I said, the text, this is probably your last resort. Um, you know, not you actually can accomplish stuff pretty granularly in here, but this is maybe a little scarier uh, messing around directly with the XML until you get used to it. So maybe a go-to move, you know, instead of grabbing it and kind of dragging it up and seeing if you can get it going in a different place, Maybe a go-to move might be to work with the component tree over here and taking the second guy and just moving him above the linear layout. So you kind of have three, three levels. You have the drop-in high level, hope for the best. You have pretty good um, using mouse, drag and drop, 
uh, control with the component tree. And then you have, hey, all else has failed. I'm going to go to the code and get it exactly where I want it type thing. Make sense? This shouldn't be too big of a challenge for us in here, given the fact that we're not going to be building really, really complex interfaces. But every now and then, you might want something to be in one of your linear layouts and it you can't you just can't get it to drop into the right place. It you know, it just is a thing. All right. So those are your go-to moves for that for it. All right. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and um, get rid of this horizontal linear layout from there, and I'm gonna get rid of this extra text view I also have. And now what we want to do is we're gonna add a, another widget. So we're gonna look at something called an edit text. Edit text is going to allow us to read something in from the user. So now what I want to do is I want to be able to type something into my edit text, then read it in when I click the button and write it, write what was we, what we typed to my label. Make sense? Getting user input, proving that we can do something to it and write it back out. Okay. So we're going to go ahead up to our common widgets up here. And uh, actually, we're going to go to our text. So if you go to your text widgets, the very top one is our text view. So that guy is our label. Now, all these other guys in here are edit texts. And they actually literally are all edit text with just a certain thing, uh, one of the attributes changed on it. So we have a plain text one, which will just give you the full, full boat keyboard. We have a password one, which will automatically have it secured to put the asterisks in there instead of what you know, what you see. It's still an edit text. It just has one of the attributes automatically set for you so you don't have to drag a generic edit text in there and then go and change two attributes. Um, same thing with like linear layout. A horizontal and a vertical linear layout are the same guy with the orientation switched. Okay. Um, so you have email ones, which only give you a keyboard with the illegal symbols for emails. You have a phone number one. Um, you have a date and time. You have a number one, which would just give you a uh, you know the numeric keypad. You can do a signed version of that as well. So you can do negative numbers. So you can kind of choose a default edit text and what you're really choosing is what your keyboard is. All right, but we're gonna go ahead and just use a plain text thing here. And I'm going to try to drop it. So actually, this is better than it used to be. So it used to be you just had a thin line. So now it kind of gives you this idea of where you're trying to drop the thing. So I'm going to drop it in between the button and my label. Okay. Now, so that's my edit text. My I'm going to read something in there. So I'm going to go up and name this guy. I'm going to call him Input ET. So this is a naming convention that I typically use. So this guy is for doing input and he's of type edit text, ET, edit text. Okay, so that's what I'll name him. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change. So he already has some text set here, right? Um, it just says name in there for text. I'm gonna take that out because I don't want it to have any text uh, in there, but I might want to give, you know how sometimes your text boxes will have like a uh, um, some, some text that you immediately write over that says this is kind of what I expect you to put here. In Android, that's called the hint. All right, so I'm gonna come here to hint. I'm gonna say, enter some stuff. All right, so that's my attribute called hint. Now I really wanna have my text here centered. How do I make my text centered in uh, um, this edit text? Gravity. Change the gravity. Yeah. Yep, so we talked about gravity last time. We think of each of these guys, so this edit text here, think of it like a room, right? And that room has its own gravity. So things that live inside the edit text, like this hint and like the text that might be in there, it's going to have gravity. Now, things that deal with text usually are gonna have your traditional um, you know, center, left justify, right justify stuff somewhere in there. But for practice, I like to just use gravity. So we'll go down to gravity because that's going to be consistent across all things, right? So I'll go ahead to gravity and we're just going to choose center. Center will suck everything to the middle horizontally and vertically. 
Now I could have said I want to center horizontally, but then I also want to push it to the top. Uh, looks like it's only treated as a one. What was that? Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, okay, so we'll just choose center because this guy didn't have a top and bottom. Um, <laughs> well, if it goes off again, we should probably take it more seriously. <laughs> but hopefully, uh, you know, just, hopefully somebody's butt bumped into a switch in some, some office somewhere. Someone in uh, our group chat goes, what was that? From here or from a different room? I think they're in the other, they're in the other computer science one, the fish one? Or the fish oh, whatever. One. Yeah, so so different rooms. So we know what's going off in different rooms. Yeah. Hmm. So, and then someone said, you heard it too. So must be. Okay, keep people. us informed. Yeah. Let us know what's going on. More than likely, it's, uh, you know, a test that was run at, a, at the wrong time or something like that. But, uh, yeah. Be prepared to carry me to safety because I have incredibly mediocre foot speed. Mediocre. <laughs> I have burst speed. I can go from one point to another quickly, and then I'm yeah. I'm it's kind of like a bear. Can't bears run like 35 miles an hour? Yeah, but they can run for a while. Can they really? Oh, so I'm not like a bear. Bears are scary, man. Well, I know bears are scary, but I thought they just could run really fast, but not for that long. Do you think if you just like put your hands up, it'll, it'll keep just more time for you? I feel like I would have a better chance than like him. <laughs> he's cutting weight. He's cutting weight. <laughs> well, I'm cutting weight too. I'm further along. <laughs> <laughs> You're a different level of evolution. <laughs> All right. So we went ahead and we put a hint in here. We centered its gravity. We named this guy input ET. So if I just run my program right now, we're gonna see that this edit box does, does work. Uh, where's my play button? So we'll see that this edit text does work. If I click it, it's gonna slide up a keyboard autom automatically. You know, so if I click on this guy, keyboard pops up and uh, I can, you know, I can use the keyboard actually if I wanted to, but you know, the emulator here does also let you type for testing. So you don't have to use the little on-screen keyboard. Um, but I'm not actually using this guy in logic, right? My click me button still does what it did before. All right. So I have a functional widget without any logic attached to it. Make sense? All right. So now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to gain access to this, uh, um, this widget in my code so I can read in what's in it and then change uh, or spit it out to my label so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into our code here and we're going to go into my on click me button pressed and i'm going to go ahead and create another thing called edit text and this guy's going to be called input et and notice here that edit text is uh in red because it needs to be uh um it needs to be uh, imported so on a Mac, you just hit option uh, return. I think it's probably what alt uh, return on a PC or just hover over it and say import. And it'll bring edit text in there. And this guy's gonna be equal to this dot find view by ID, r dot ID dot input ET. Wait, so when it says import the class or whatever, like if you get- That does from, this right up here. Yeah, but uh, well, like I had problems with the view method. Like I could, for some yeah. reason, like when I try to type in view, it just flash red. Yeah. So highlight over it and then say import class, and that will add this automatically to the top. Okay. I was just curious. Is it like a custom? Yep. Yeah, no, that's that's how it knows about it, because that edit text and that text view, um, as well as your uh, view live in different packages. So your view lives in something called android.view.view. Your um, uh, uh, edit text and text view live inside of android.widget. So in order to, I mean, I could just say android.widget.star, which says give me access to all the widgets and make my 
uh, code probably extra bloated at compile time because I've given myself to the given myself access to the 200 widgets that exist, even though I'm only using three of them. Okay, but they're all in the toolbox. You know that guy who's coming to install the, uh, um, you know the, the new light switch panel where you just need a flathead screwdriver, but he brings in the you know the giant trunk toolbox with every single tool under the sun in there when all you needed was a screwdriver. Yeah. Um, hey, it's still he still put that panel on, no problem. <laughs> all right, so makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself access to my input et, asking my activity to go and find that view within him. So now I have that guy, and what I'll go ahead and do is uh, I'll go ahead and put it in a, in a string just to keep things very separated, even though you probably can just use it directly. Um, so we'll call this uh, new text. And we're gonna say this guy is input et dot get text. Now notice this guy comes in as something called editable. All right, so when something has a ball at the end of it, what does that usually mean? What kind of what kind of thing is that? What kind of animal are a bulls? We talked about these uh, before break. Interface? Interfaces. Yep. So interfaces typically have a naming convention called a bull. All right. So if I go into let's just. Uh, do a search here for um, Java editable and what is an interface remind me in the context of this not our interface to make things look pretty Remember we talked about interfaces kind of like the um, the gun you use in the uh, grocery store for scanning the you know, UPC codes or whatever um, so it has like a standard so this sets a standard for a bunch of objects so if we go to editable, we'll prove to ourselves that editable is indeed an interface. All right. And what does he, um, he implements some other things. He implements something called a char sequence. So he's also a char sequence. He's also a get chars. He's also a spanable. He's also an appendable. But this is interesting. So these two first guys, these guys are both interfaces as well, yet they don't follow that a bull rule all right so let's see what this says he must have so he has an append just insert here's other inherited method message uh, methods from um let's look at char sequence i'm guess, guessing he gets a two string yeah from char sequence he gets a two string so he can convert himself into a string so we're getting this guy out of here as an editable and notice right now how it's not happy with me. If I hover over this, does it give me a potential fix? Mm, doesn't actually suggest a fix, that's okay. It's just giving me an error saying it's requiring a string but it got an editable. So I can either cast this to a string. Now, it's still not happy about that because it's saying this guy's still an editable, but we just saw that we can call his two string method. And now he produced the string version of himself because editables are also char sequences. Okay? So this allows me to uh, squeeze the string out of an editable. Whereas my input et.getText boils down to something that is editable. Okay? So now I have my string. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my um, uh, what I'm setting my label to to be whatever is in that edit text plus a space plus the count. Okay, so every time I hit this button, new text will read in whatever's in my edit text. So I'll run this again. All right, and I'll go ahead and just change my edit text to say hello. Then I'll say click me and there's my hello zero. Now I'll change this guy to uh, the little smiley face guy. I wonder if it changes that to an emoji, nope. So there's my smiley face one. I can keep clicking that a bunch of times if I want. 
then I can change this guy to just bang on the keyboard, so on and so forth. All right, so now we're proving we can read stuff in from the user, and we can write stuff uh, uh, out to the text view. Okay, we're good with that. All right, so now, what we want to do, let's see, so we can read stuff in, read, write stuff out. Um, Let's practice with this first. All right, so what we want to do is we're going to kind of go back to our idea of fractions. Okay, remember our fractions? That way we don't connect too many uh, uh, new things. So we're going to create a fraction object. So I'm just going to go up to my normal Java thing here. And I'm going to right click. I'm going to say new. I'm going to say Java class. I'm not creating, so let me make a differentiation here. When we create a second screen in our application, we're going to need a new activity. And we would probably start with an empty activity, whatever that is. So when we create another screen, we're going to create another activity. And we'll do that um, this week. Okay? But for right now, I want to be able to read some stuff in from the user and ultimately give myself uh, an output. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to create a new Java class. This is a plain Jane Java class, has nothing to do with Android. We just happen to be using it in our Android application. And we're going to call this guy Fraction. Okay, so here's our Fraction class. Now what I'm going to do just for the sake of argument here, I'm going to go into Eclipse real quick. And we already have a Fraction written, right? We could have imported the fraction that we had. Uh... Oh, do I already have a clips open? Yeah, so here's our fraction. We could have imported this guy directly, but I'll just go ahead and grab all the stuff from there bring it into this class, boom, we have fraction. All right, so we've previously implemented our fraction, whatever, go ahead. Um, well, yeah, it's in the same package. Yeah, you, we created it here. Um, what you would actually do is you would right click and you would probably say import. Um, although to your point, import sometimes gives you kind of weird results I have found. So usually what I would do is I would say reveal and finder, which takes you here. And then I would just drag Java classes in that you wanted to bring into your project. All right, but I just went ahead and created the local fraction class, let it make sure it was part of the right package by default. And then I just pasted in everything inside the curly braces. All right, so now we have the ability to create fractions given um, a numerator and denominator or given a fraction uh, uh, base for it, all that stuff. Okay? All right, so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and use this. We developed this with normal Eclipse in mind, right? Just plain Jane, non-pretty interface, blah, blah, blah. So we want to go ahead and have the ability to enter in a fraction and add that to another fraction. So we're going to design our interface for this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and take out, uh, um, I'm going to take out almost all the stuff um, right now. And we're going to change this button's text to say, add fractions. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to create a couple of fractions. So I'm going to probably, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a horizontal linear layout. And I'm going to put two vertical linear layouts inside of it. Numerator, denominator, numerator, denominator, with a label in between that just is a plus sign. All right, and I'll just mock it up with like a one half and a one fourth or something like that, just so we see something pretty there for the a starting point. So I'm going to go into my layouts, and I'm going to put in a horizontal linear layout here. And then inside that horizontal linear layout, I'm going to create a vertical linear layout. Then I'm going to put another, well, then I'm going to put a 
text view. And then I'm going to put another vertical linear layout. Okay, now notice here that the vertical linear layout dropped inside of the, uh, um, uh, well, actually all my things ended up inside of each other. So I have my vertical linear layout inside the horizontal one, my text view inside the vertical, and my vertical also inside the vertical. I want these guys to be separate, so I can kind of do that out here. All right, so now they're separate, um, separate monsters. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight all three of those. Now notice the width currently is match parent. We've seen that problem several times. So I'm just going to do the drop down and say wrap content. All right, so now all of them are set to wrap content. So you can do it to multiple things at once. So I'm going to change my text views text to be a plus sign. Okay, and then let's change the font on that guy to be like a 36, something like that. All right, now I'm going to put a couple of edit text inside of my linear layout. And we're going to have these guys be uh, positive numbers. So I'm actually going to drag it down here to get them into the interface relatively quickly. All right, that makes some sense. All right, now for my edit text right now, they're set to match parent. So they're gonna match the width of uh, um, the parent. We might decide we wanna give these guys some sort of uh, um, forced uh, size. There's also a thing that you can do for, um, what I'll do is I'm gonna choose my vertical linear layout, my text view and my other vertical linear layout those three things and then you can go down to um, where's weight and at this point we're probably getting a little fancier than we have to be but I'll just show it to you since it's relatively quick uh, where's that layout weight so I'm going to do 0 0.33 and what that should do is it should make each of them 33%. Um, I lost my plus sign. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, and we're just going to do this because we can. I'm just going to choose my two vertical linear layouts. And we're going to say for layout width rather than wrap content, we're just going to make it 200. Perfect. All right. So it's, so it's, it's 200 now just because, and actually we might even decide to make it uh, 50. That looks more fraction-y, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. That looks awesome. All right. So then if I want it centered, right, then I would just set the gravity in my horizontal linear layout. to center horizontally. I don't want it to be centered uh, um, vertically because that'll move it to the middle of the screen. And then right now you notice that our horizontal linear layout is taking up the entire screen. So I'll go up and I'll change his height instead of match parent to wrap content. All right, well, where's my... Oh, so that guy got cut. Off. So let's do our vertical. We'll say vertical height is wrap content. And we'll do it for the other one too, even though the other one got fixed because the first one pushed the, uh, the horizontal linear layout down. But we'll set both of them to have height that, ma that wraps content. All right, so now we have two fractions. And we'll set these guys hint. Um, so we'll call this guy num1. Uh, let's just call it N1. And this guy is D1. This guy is N2. 
this guy is D2, okay, for our numerator and our denominator. All right, and then we'll go ahead and set the gravity for those two guys to be centered horizontally. All right, so we got some awesome looking fractions there. Um, now, we might want to put a, a little line in there between them, but uh, they look fraction enough uh, to us, right? So we'll just call that good enough. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to have now an answer down below. So we'll go ahead and drop a text view in here. We'll set the gravity of that text view. Actually, let's make the, uh, the text of him larger. And we'll go ahead and set his gravity to center horizontally. And then we'll change his text to say answer. Why does it say OK? To say answer. And then underneath there, we're going to have um, kind of another fraction, right? So I'll actually steal our two edit text here. And we will paste it down there. But notice that it, uh, oh, didn't do that. I'll steal one of this. I'll steal this vertical linear layout. And then I'm going to paste it inside of my first vertical linear layout. I'll drag it to the bottom. Okay. Um, so now our interface is getting a little bit complex, right? So we have this uh, horizontal linear layout, and then we have this first linear layout. But now what we can do is we can actually change the uh, text of this guy. I think I could change the text of this guy. Oh, yeah, you got to do it out here. So for my for this linear layout, I'm going to change his ID to be fraction one. So notice how he shows up as fraction one down here. And then for this other vertical linear layout, we'll call this guy fraction two. Okay, so we're just naming our linear layouts fraction one and fraction two. That way in our little tree here, it looks a little uh, more you know, I guess readable. And then we'll call this guy the, the plus sign. And maybe we call this guy uh, data entry for our top level horizontal linear layout. And then we have two fractions separated by a plus sign. All right, now for that um, uh, plus sign, we're gonna go ahead and set his gravity. We want it to be centered because notice that he's, uh, um, well actually, let's set his height to match parent. All right, so now he's the same height as his parent, which is this linear layout. And then we will go ahead and set his gravity to center. And now we have the plus sign in the middle. All right, so this is this is starting to become kind of an exhilarating interface. I mean, this is the type of thing that sells, millions of dollars type of thing. All right, so, but we're kind of seeing the mechanics of how interfaces work, right? All right, so now we're going to have our answer down here. Now, actually, our answer is not going to be edit text, right? Our answer is going to be a hard-coded numerator and denominator, just poof, this is your answer. All right. So we'll go ahead and instead of these guys being edit text, we'll get rid of the edit text and we'll put two text views in here. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and um, set these guys. What did we set our width for those other things to be? I think we set it to be uh, 200, right? No, we set it to 50. Fraction one was 50. Yeah, so we set the width to 50. And then we'll set the height to wrap content. 
All right, and we're going to rename this guy to fraction answer. We'll call this uh, numerator answer and denominator answer. Okay, now we want to go ahead and have the um, uh, this horror, this vertical linear layout lives inside of this. So his parent is this top level linear layout. So if I want this guy to go to the middle, can't I just set the um, gravity for the top level to be center horizontally? All these other things are already centered horizontally, right? Inside their own little pods. So I can just click on this top level guy, go to gravity. And I'll choose center horizontally and apply that. So that sucks it to the middle there. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and we'll put another text view there in the middle. And we're gonna set this guy to be a whole bunch of hyphens like that. Okay. It just, oh man, yeah, one, one left. Yeah, this is stuff. All right, so, and then we're gonna have our uh, um, text view. This is gonna be you know numerator. Why? I just wanted it to be an N. And it wants to read something in from the, and this is gonna be denominator. All right, and then we'll have all of these centered. For gravity, this <laughs> is making the graphic designer and you throw up. <laughs> no, I didn't. We need to put the graphic designer we need it. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the graphic designer? Cass Kenny? Yeah. All right. This is what's good. <laughs> all right, nailed it. <laughs> Um, oh, this guy probably needs to be a bigger font though, right? We want that line to be solid. So we'll actually probably then need to shorten the line. Oh yeah, so we only need four things in there. Boom. All right, so. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that is a thing, yeah. So uh, then the height for that center guy, we want to have him to, oh, it's already set to wrap content? Oh, because the uh, the thing is 36. Try inserting these hyphens to see what's on this stuff. Yeah, because they're underscore. Because then that'll connect. You think? Yeah. Weird. Are you lying? No, underscore. Yeah, but yeah, but how's that going to change the height? <laughs> Look at this though, this video is invalid. <laughs> Durr. Because then you won't have to make it as big. To make it look, look like those aren't connected. I don't know what's going on with here. Yeah, look. This is good. So, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is good is what that is. Um, yeah, then we'll, so we'll, we'll select our numerator and denominator. We'll change its font to the same thing because that's awesome. Oh, now it looks perfect. All right. Now, realistically, our answer could be quite large. So maybe we want to make this guy 100 for width, something like that, just in case our numbers get a little big. Perfect, yep. And then, you know, throw a couple more. Uh... Boom. All right, so we, <laughs> this, is, this is a awesome, awesome thing. Now, above answer though, somewhere I have, oh, there's my, there's my click me button. So we probably wanna have your data entry for your uh, um, fractions at the top and then maybe have add fractions right below that, something like that. 
So we'll just move this guy below data entry. We'll do it better. We'll move data entry above the click me button. There we go. <laughs> um, perfect. All right, so now what we want to be able to do, so if I, if I want to go ahead and run this, What are you complaining about? Oh, it's complaining that since I copied some stuff, it's uh, it also copied the name of the IDs, right? Oh, it's complaining about my hard-coded width because it wants it in pixels. So I can choose uh, my data entry, instead of this guy being 50, I can say 50p, I think. Oh, that's, no, it did not like that. Um, DP. There we go. And then this guy will be 50 DP. And these are density, um, well, there's a word in the middle, density agnostic pixels. So different screens have different screen densities. So like pixels per inch, that thing. So this is independent of that. Uh, and then this guy down here will be the same thing. This is 100 DP. All right, so he should be happier now. All right, so it can't find symbol. Oh, because we, we removed my label. So this is just in our code. We no longer have a label called my label or a thing called edit text, right? So for right now, I'll just go ahead and gut this code because that code no longer does what we wanted, to, what it was doing before. Similarly, we'll go ahead and get rid of count. All right. And now we should be able to run it and we have a pretty interface that does nothing. All right. So we could put in like one half plus one fourth and then we click add fractions and we want us to give us the result reduced we already have all that code right all right so for your homework build this interface or something similar to it if you want to get creative you can get creative but we're adding two fractions together we're clicking a button we're displaying the sum as a reduced fraction everybody that makes sense That'll get you practice building me a, a you know a, an amazingly complex interface, um, <laughs> and using some code you've previously written to convince yourself that Java is Java. It doesn't matter what ecosystem we are using those objects in. We're taking a fraction we've already built that already works, and we're just dropping it into our Android application because hey, we're working with fractions. Make sense? Questions, comments, concerns, bribes. Go ahead. Is it a bribe? No. Oh. All right. Go ahead. In design, when you have like your view, I also have like an identical view. Like when I have my oh 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 yeah, I know what you're talking about. So in this, you have uh, it's this guy here, I believe. Yeah. So if you hit the little drop down, just to choose design, yours says design plus blueprint. What's the yeah. Thing? The blueprint, I think it shows you the constraints and stuff. Um, it might also help you do some layout stuff. We're starting to get to the end of my uh, layout ability at this point. So <laughs> I basically I basically always just say design because I'm able to achieve perfection here. <laughs> uh, you have guidelines in your component tree. Yeah. Do you still have constraint layout at the top? Or is your say linear layout? The stop one. Well, so your very top thing is called my label. You don't have a linear layout. Oh, yeah, that's problematic. Yeah, you want to have a because when you first create a project, the default is constraint layout. And then I right click on that and I say convert view. 
and I choose linear layout. Yeah, so if you just have a label, I don't, I don't know how you got into that state. It's an interesting, um, interesting thing. Uh, today, student, faculty, staff, Bible study, God and grub, go to the cafeteria, sign in, get a free lunch, take it down to the terrace room from noon to one. Also, at 1240, I think is the time, Professor Josh Locklear is giving a talk in the Lakeshore room. So we're actually going to Bible study for 30 minutes and then going to that. So if you'd like to see him give his uh, talk and some research he's worked on, I encourage you to show up and heckle. <laughs>